Welcome to NorCal Slot Car Scene. Today, I'm going to review the DeFalco DD302 controller. I'm going to let you know why I chose this specific version of the DeFalco 132nd controllers and let you know how it performs for me. When I looked on the DeFalco website, there were five controllers designed for 132nd scale racing. The DD300 is a 17 band controller and a great way for someone to get into a high quality controller at an entry level price. The DD301 is a 30 band version of the DD300. When you go up to the DD302, then you add traction control along with the sensitivity and adjustable brakes. And that's the controller I chose. There are also two higher end controllers the DD-303 and the DD-304, which are very similar to the 301 and the 302, but they add a brake relay for the ultimate in stopping power. The reason I chose the 302 was the fact it had all the features I wanted, plus one big thing, it fits in my pit box. DeFalco controllers come with what's called a resistor network. This is a replaceable plug-in resistor board that allows you to tailor the controller to the type of car you're running. The 132nd scale controllers come standard with a 290 ohm resistor network. Don't confuse this with other controllers which are 25 ohm, 3 ohm for 24 scale and so on in that this is the total resistance of the board in 290 ohms is perfect for 132nd scale slot cars. Other resistor networks are available for just about any form of slot racing from unlimited 24 scale down to Frey HO cars. The Frey HO resistor network is actually 377 ohms. One great feature of this controller is that it comes with two different triggers. One is slightly curved and one is a bit more flat. If you drive with your finger, the standard curved controller works great, but if you drive like I do with the tip of your finger, that can be a little uncomfortable, and the flat trigger is much more comfortable. I usually modify my triggers just a bit by taking a Dremel sanding disc and sanding just a little bit where my fingertip actually touches the trigger in operation, and that makes it just a little bit more comfortable as well. When I get to the track, here's how I started with the DeFalco controller. I set everything to full sensitive. That means that the car is extremely hard to drive. Sensitivity is turned to the max, traction control is turned down, and the brakes are turned all the way up. The first thing I do is run the car and find what I consider the sweet spot for that car with sensitivity. So I get it so it drives fairly nicely, coming off the corners hard, uh, but I tend to err on the aggressive side. Maybe it's a little bit too hard to drive, and that's where I start. Next, I set the brakes. I tend to drive with a little bit more brakes than most people, uh, typically in the 70 to 90 percent range. Like sensitivity, brakes is somewhat of a personal preference for feel as well as the car itself. When I was running the Thunder Slot car with a stock motor, I was down to about 60 to 70 percent brakes because that car has lots of brakes inherently built in. When I changed the motor out to the 22.5 Predator motor, I had to up the brakes to about 90% because that motor has less brakes because it's a bit faster. Now it's time to run the car. If I'm having trouble on almost all the corners with a little bit too much power, then I'll dial the sensitivity down just a bit more. However, if it's only doing it in the tight corners, that's when traction control comes into play. I'll just dial the traction control up just a little bit to tame that bottom end so the car doesn't get loose coming off the tight corners. This can be especially helpful in the gutter lanes. Now it's time to race and see if all these features translate to faster lap times and winning races. I used this controller for the first time last weekend at Silicon Valley Speedway in San Jose. Uh, I was able to win both the Carrera NASCAR IROC as well as the Can-Am class. So from the slowest cars to the fastest cars, this controller performed extremely well and I'm very happy with it and rec would recommend it to anyone. I hope you enjoyed this review. This is Jim Rose with NorCal Slot Car Scene.